Hey kids, look, I'm a mixologist, just like a gun bunny is a skilled shooter. This video is brought to you by Sportsman's Guide, your one-stop shop for all your outdoor needs. Check them out at www.sportsmansguide.com. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Ordnance Lab. I'm Jake, AKA the Mad Scientist, AKA Low Budget Imhotep, which I rather like. That's a pretty good nickname ever since I started shaving my head. Uh, I'm, I'm sticking with that one. And of course, we're gonna keep calling Sean Discount Jim Carrey because, you know, it's pretty fitting. But anyways, welcome back to the channel. And for those of you who are new to the channel, hey, Welcome to Ordnance Lab because it's your, basically your one-stop shop for, you know, things that go boom, exotic weapons, really bad jokes, world domination to, uh, obsessed cats, and really goofy Labradors. But then again, that implies that there's some type of serious Labrador and, you know, from my experience, there is no serious Labradors. So today's video came about through the request of numerous reviewers asking, can Tannerite form a shaped charge? And to answer that question, I don't know. I've never used Tannerite or Monol as an explosive for shaped charges. Normally when we use shaped charges, we use high detonation velocity explosives such as RDX, PTN, or TNT, or our liquid explosive Gemini, which does very well. You might have seen in the previous video where we used it in a wine bottle shaped charge and the soda bottle shaped charge. And if you haven't seen those videos, I urge you to go check them out. It gives you a really good idea of how well that explosive performs. But Tannerite or Monol is not a great explosive for this particular job because, well, it has numerous properties that don't make it an ideal explosive for shaped charges, which we're gonna cover in this video. Now, as I say that Tannerite is not a great explosive, it has its uses, of course. Tannerite is great for, say, moving earth because it's a very cheap explosive, or not necessarily Tannerite, but the explosive of Monol because Tannerite actually is a commercial name or trade name marketed by a private company for reactive targets. You shoot it, it's impact sensitive, and then it blows up and then you know you shot it, right? Hence the term reactive target. Target, you know, go figure. But Ammonol, the explosive itself, because it has a lower detonation velocity than, say, RDX or TNT, it's not the best choice. Plus, the other big problem is the hydroscopic nature of ammonium nitrate. It likes to absorb water, and it makes it very difficult to grind down to a fine powder, which also makes it difficult to get an adequate mixture with the fuel, in this case, aluminum. And because of that, it is very difficult to get a perfect homogeneous mixture without any consistencies, which we're gonna pack into a shaped charge, which we're gonna show in this video. So today's experiment, we're going to test whether or not it works in numerous different situations and then determine, well, under this scenario, whether it works or not. But before we get into that, we need to discuss some legality things because of, you know, lawyers and stuff and whatnot. So Sean's going to discuss why you can purchase Tannerite without a federal explosive license, but you can't say walk into a store and buy TNT, which I'm pretty sure a lot of people would love to, but, you know, it's just not the thing. So let's cut over and talk to Sean. All right, so Jake invited me to come on here and talk about the legalities of Tannerite. One thing we want to make sure is that I'm definitely not a lawyer, even though I've been deemed an expert witness on explosives in federal court, but that's a whole other story. If we need expert witness services, we can provide those. Nice little advertisement. But anyways, the way that things work with uh, binary explosives is that there's no federal regulation on the manufacturing of it, provided you're doing it for non-commercial reasons. So if, hey, you and your buddies are out there going, you know, you got a shooting competition and you want to put three pounds of Tannerite in the lawnmower and shoot it, hey, as long as you're doing that for your own private reasons, totally legal to go out there and do that. But if you were to transport it or store it or transfer it, that's when you need the explosives license or you'd want to start using it for commercial purposes. So like for FPS Russia, one of my understanding is that the way that the ATF started looking at him was that they were making Tannerite without having an explosives license. So you and your homeboys sitting out on the farm shooting Tannerite on your own, totally legal. But if you were to go out there and YouTube, make a YouTube video on blowing stuff up out there at the ranch and monetize it, ATF would require you to have a manufacturing license. And again, wanna make sure we remind folks that hey, your state and local regulations may be different. Like here in Texas, there's no state regulations on explosives. You go to like Florida, you have to have an explosives license to be able to set off Tannerite even. Now that Sean got the legality aspect out of the way, we can move on to explaining the experiment for this video. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna detonate four shaped charges. I made four, 
identical, or well, as close as I can to identical. There's some variables in this, the, the amount of glass I had to cut, as well as say, for example, cutting the PVC. I'm not the greatest at it. You know, I'm a chemist. I am not a professional PVC cutter or a pipe fitter or anything of that nature. So there's, I'm gonna say that there is some variables in each shape charge, namely the amount of glass, because when we cut it, sometimes it breaks off and is not consistent. And as well as cutting the PVC, we had to use a uh, oscillating saw and there was a little bit of jitter, which, you know, but it's minor. I don't anticipate that causing much of a problem. What we're gonna do is first set off a baseline charge or our control group, which is gonna be filled with a uh, 350 grams of Gemini explosive. Now, if you've seen in the previous videos, which I mentioned before, this does very well. So we know this is going to punch through steel like a hot knife through butter. Awesome. The next charge is gonna use legit Tannerite. We bought this specifically for this test because we manufacture our own explosive. Buying this gets really expensive. But you may have seen this before in videos where people pack it inside a lawnmower and shoot it and nearly kill themselves, or they put it in a car and shoot it and nearly kill themselves. You see the trend here? Yeah, you have to treat this like any other explosive. If otherwise, and you lose your respect for explosives, they get the best of you and well, you turn into a pink, pink mist, which is, you know, it's a real crimp on life. So you gotta be careful. But anyways, we're going to mix it up and then we're going to put it into a shape charge and it's demonstrate that it's not the best explosive for this uh, style of uh, shape charge. Well, in reality for any shape charge because it is in prill form and we're going to lose a lot of density by putting it in there as a prill. For the last part of this experiment, I have two shape charges and we have a pre-mixed amount of a monol explosive. And now this explosive is, is what we normally use in a lot of our previous videos, especially for expedient weapons such as pipe bombs. And it's going to be unadulterated. We normally enhance it for those videos. For this one, it is straight ammo ammonium nitrate and aluminum and a proper ratio for the maximum amount of detonation velocity. We've experimented with different ratios. We found this to be the optimal mix. So this is going to be the best performing in my opinion versus this because it's also ground down and that is a painstaking process of ball milling ammonium nitrate keeping it really dry to maximize the density and therefore fill this in right and fill it into the shape charge because we're gonna have a little bit of a problem even with this I still have to pack it in here and then get a nice consistent fill which is not gonna be easy but hopefully it does work I was hoping I'm hoping we see some type of shape charge effect but I'm not really you know holding my breath on that one so anyways, enough talking, let's head over to the range, set off their first charge, which is the Gemini charge, which is gonna be, you know, very spectacular, punch through the metal, like no, like no problem, and then move on to the Tannerite charge, and then finally the Monol charge, and then compare, see how well it performs or doesn't perform. Well, let's find out. Our baseline is gonna be a ship charge with Gemini liquid explosive. We're gonna fill this with 350 grams, and then set it off against this plate of steel here, and then take a look at the effects. Oh, obviously it's gonna work very well, but we wanna use this as the baseline, so we can compare it against the Tannerite charge. So we're gonna fill it up, uh, put a uh, blasting cap in it, and then set it off. So let's watch this thing go off. As always, the Gemini Explosive delivers an impressive explosion that is pleasing in sight and sound. As we review the video from the high-speed camera, we can see the detonation wave traveling through the shock tube as it heads to set off the blasting cap. Now that is pretty cool. Despite recording at just over 2000 frames a second, it is tough to capture the explosion in extreme detail frame by frame. No matter, it is still pleasing to watch. Well, as always, the wine bottle shape charge never fails to impress me. This hole is gnarly. And we only used 350 grams of the explosive, and yet it punched through the steel like it was nothing. I mean, look at that, that is beautiful. And not only that, it went further into the ground, a solid seven inches or 18 centimeters. So it means it still had plenty of energy past the metal plate into the ground. And this is hard packed clay, it's not easy to dig up. So it shows you the, the power of these shape charges. Now that we have this as the baseline, let's move on to the uh, legit Tannerite shape charge. And then after that, we'll do two charges with the ground down Ammonol and see how it compares. And we'll do it on the same plate so we have a comparison. Now, once again, I don't anticipate it penetrating this or really shape charging, but we'll see. I might be wrong. Hey, sometimes I am. It's, I, <laughs> I have no problem admitting it. All right, so let's mix it up, prep it, and then set it off. It's pretty funny. I made pipe bombs, hand grenades, all kinds of explosive ordnance, but I've never actually personally mixed tanner. I'd always been around when folks did it, 
but this is my first time to actually make Tannerite, so it's first time for everything. Sean prepared the Tannerite for the first test. We had to unfortunately censor some parts as we don't want to get flagged for showing how to make explosive devices. YouTube has pulled some of our videos for this, so censored. Once the shape charge was loaded with Tannerite, we got into place. All right, time for experiment number two, testing out the legit or clone correct Tannerite because well, it's legit Tannerite we bought with our own money. Tannerite did not sponsor this video. I have no idea if they're gonna respond to this. They might, who knows? I mean, we get responses from other manufacturers when we test their stuff such as uh, Can Can X products. They actually rather enjoy our test with their the pipe bomb can cannon, but this one, I don't know. They may like it, may not, but anyways. So we filled this up with 400 grams of Tannerite. And as you can see in the photos that it's, it's in there, it's all the way to the top, but unfortunately there's a lot of void space in there because well, it's in prill form. And then that is a wasted amount of space that could be filled with say, if it was a powdered version or liquid explosive or a plastic explosive where I could fill every little bit. And because of this, that inconsistency is gonna create probably a problem, it's gonna create a problem, it's gonna not, I don't think it's gonna generate the adequate uh, consi or consistent shock wave to generate the shape charge. We did as best we can to keep this nice and uniform, have this, the blasting cap dead center, and we're gonna place it right here next to the su very successful wine bottle shape charge with the uh, Gemini, and see if it even, maybe, uh, we might get some marks on the, on the metal, but I'm not very hopeful. So uh, we have 45 seconds of fuse, that gives us enough time to get back to our blast site. Let's see if this thing actually works. It is pretty obvious that the explosion from the Tannerite is far weaker in comparison to the Gemini explosive. Even with more explosive loaded into the first charge, it detonated with a rather meager blast. Freezing the frame here shows a yellowish tinge in the smoke, which is often seen in Tannerite detonations. This is due to the presence of nitrogen dioxide gas generated from the decomposition of ammonium nitrate. This means not all the ammonium nitrate is being reacted with the aluminum, and we get an incomplete and weak reaction. The slow motion video also shows this in awesome detail. Let's rewind it and see it played back at a slower frame rate. The charge did detonate, but the poor ratio of ammonium nitrate to aluminum results in a weak explosion. But did the explosion form a shaped charge? Well, let's see. All right, so you might have noticed in the slow-mo camera that it was a little bit dark, and that's because we filmed it a little bit closer to the end of the day, and we were losing a ton of light. The sun sets here pretty fast during the winter time, and it's not the ideal to, uh, place to film slow motion. Slow motion cameras need a ton of light. The faster the shutter speed, the more light you need. So the ideal time frame, especially now during the winter time, you have like six hours tops before it starts to get really dark. But anyways, as you can see on the plate, no penetration as I estimated. And I'm pretty sure that everybody, well, most of people who are watching this were like, yeah, well, I saw that coming. There's gonna be like a small percentage of people that are like, oh, it was gonna work. No, like, like I said before, Tannerite, because it is in prill form, we're not gonna get the max density within the shape charge. And also you have a lot of uh, void space and it's not, I can't press it in there consistently. So the chances of it forming a shape charge was pretty minimal, almost zero. I don't wanna say zero because there is a radial pattern. So it did try to lens that focus, or it did try to lens that uh, explosive force onto the plate. So it tried, but unfortunately it wasn't good enough. But now we can go test the uh, ammonial charges that we made with the ground down ammonium nitrate and see how they perform. All right, so here's our next experiment. We're gonna be using the ammonol explosive in a shape charge. The same shape charge as all the other ones, except that this is our mixture, which is mixed to the perfect ratio as we determined to get the maximum detonation velocity. Tannerite is mixed for more sensitivity to our impact, where this is not, this is for the optimal mix, as I like to say. And this should get the best performance that we po possibly could hope out of this situation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna place it on this thinner plate of steel because, well, we saw that the Tannerite charge didn't work. So it's safe to say that this is probably not gonna work either, but if it does, hopefully it'll punch through this steel. And if it does, we'll move on to the heavier plate of steel with the second charge. So we'll place it here in the original position because it, you might've noticed in the other video, it was, it was in a different position or with the Tannerite charge because we had to move it up the field to get more sunlight because, well, we filmed it too late in the day, but. Right now we have plenty of sunlight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna place this charge here. 
right dead center. And then we'll put the uh, explosive in there. Of course, we can't show the manufacturing part of this whole process because, well, we don't wanna get flagged by YouTube for manufacturing devices or instruction on that whole matter, even though we go to great lengths to censor a lot of those parts so we don't get in trouble for that. But hey, they've pulled two videos already for that very matter, so whatever. So <laughs> we're, we're gonna show as much as we can without getting in trouble. So we're gonna use approximately 460 grams. I may have spoken, misspoken earlier, but it's 460 grams of, a, of the total explosive in this charge, as well as in the other charge. Why 460? Well, that's about as much I can get in here, and it's also about as all the ammonium nitrate we have left for this experiment because we've been using it up for other projects. So let's get this thing ready and blow it up. Despite being chemically similar to Tannerect, the powdered ammonial explosive detonated with a far more powerful blast. Side by side, its difference in detonation is very obvious. The slow motion shows an impressive detonation wave. Notice the absence of the orange-red tinge in the smoke, a solid indication of a balanced and complete reaction. Well, skin me alive and call me luggage, as Sean would say in his Texas draw, but uh, hey, I was wrong and I got no problem admitting it. As you can see, the plate punched right through, <laughs> or the shape charge punched right through the plate, and has this really gnarly uh, asymmetrical hole. Normally with the shape charges, you get a pretty symmetrical, fairly symmetrical hole. And this one is, uh, looks like somebody punched it literally with a fist and like colossus, but uh, still successful. Now this means that the ammonol works and we had to go to great lengths to grind it down, keep it dry, mix it, get the right ratio. Whereas with the Tannerite, we were not, I mean, we had nowhere close to this kind of performance. Now, now that we see that this works, let's upgrade to the thicker plate of steel and see how it performs. Just like the first ammonal charge, the second charge detonated with the same level of performance. A good sign the explosive may have achieved a proper lensing with the shaped charge. Reviewing the video in slow motion is gratifying as it demonstrates the sheer velocity and force of the explosion. Let's rewind it and see it play back at a slower frame rate. It is clear as day to see the difference between the tannerite and ammonal charges. So that was a pretty impressive blast. We definitely felt it from our safety position, but let's take a look at the plate. Oh, look at that. So we did not get penetration unfortunately, but I wasn't expecting it to, uh, to penetrate this plate. You could tell from the original, from the first plate that it did go through, but it was pretty messy. And it would, you can often tell also how well it goes into the ground if it's gonna go any further. It only went a couple centimeters into the ground, which meant that it was pretty much out of energy once it went through that metal plate. This one, it went, it left a nice, almost circular mark. Uh, an impression into the metal and it warped it on the backside. So still it did lens, it did form a shape charge, but it was not powerful enough to penetrate this plate. But you can obviously see compared to the Gemini, the Gemini had no problem going right through, the Ammonol did not. So it's safe to say that yes, Ammonol did work in this case. Uh, I mean, yes, they're improvised shape charges and you know, a more uh, refined shape charge, say a 3D printed one or a machine one might do better. But in this case, it does work, but not ideally. But still, that's pretty impressive, especially since this is a pretty thick plate of steel and was able to do that. And it has, you can see the leftover glass that's <clears throat> that hit the metal and then re-solidified. So yeah, still pretty impressive. Well, so what did we learn in this video? Well, that Tannerite is not the best explosive for shaped charges. But it, it is good for lawnmowers. Absolutely. Uh, it's great for people who are trying to yeet themselves out of society or at least lose a leg or worse. I mean, as, you, as I mentioned before, there's a common commonality in all these videos where people use Tannerite to blow up cars or blow up lawnmowers. You either nearly die or I'm pretty sure somebody has died in the process. Yeah, so yeah. one of the things that we... Oh, even though we do make fun of Tannerite as peasant dust or whatever, that's more of just a joke um, for us to flex on the pores, as people <laughs> like to say. But peasant this dust. one right here, like, don't <laughs> don't underestimate the, the danger of it if you're too close to it. They recommend, I believe, a 100-meter standoff per 
um, pound or something like that. We don't really read the instructions. Minimum but, for that. Yeah, right. like this is something that you do want to have that far away. That um, if you sit there and shoot it too close, you can kick up rocks and all kinds of stuff. It's just again, it's make sure that you are using caution to avoid those Darwinian consequences. But it, even though it doesn't work for that, uh, Jake's Gemini, which is similar to that, does actually work pretty good. You can see that it yeeted this thing right here out of existence. What was that? One eighth steel. Yeah, so this is 1 steel, and when we mixed up the ammonol, it worked out great by grinding down. And this is the, the points I also want to point out in this video is that, one, tannerite does not work in a shape charge fashion, and that to make it work, you have to grind it down, and that took a while. It took several days of grinding, because the problem is, though, is as you grind it, and it goes to a powder, I, even in a sealed container, it was starting to absorb water. So I had to grind it in sections, then dry it, grind some more, then dry it, and it, it, it was three yeah, days It's a lot work. of work. It's like Buddy Needon, and yeah. um, he's always sitting there doing that. But you can see that it worked um, really well compared to the Tannerite, that work you put into there uh, to do it. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it managed to completely bend this 1 8 <laughs> into a U. I think that's pretty impressive. But, and... Even though it's destroyed, what? Ah, yes. This is like, it's got a lot, I could be like Vanna White or whatever, uh, with the nouns of what we have available for our prizes. So for the thousands comment, we're going to give this one away. Uh, it, once again, there's a, you know, we try to give out a gift for the thousands comment, help us defeat the evil algorithm by increasing engagement. And we figured that our viewers might enjoy this because we have no use for this anymore. Um, we have plenty of ornaments around here from all the stuff we've blown up. So we'll engrave it. We'll try to put your name on it. At least put an engravement or if you don't want the engraving, we'll just send it to you. Just let us know. Yeah. But the thousands comment, we'll track you down and send this on your very Just don't way. try to lick it or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this one we're going to have to keep. It's too big. It would be cost too much to send it. But uh, it also we can reuse this plate for some other shape charge test because we still got plenty of steel. But, it, you know, it has an excellent comparison of the the uh, the ammonol charge that did not penetrate, but it did warp the plate. That's is, a lot of steel to warp. Yeah, that's still pretty impressive versus the Gemini, which punched right through. And like I said, you always want to opt for the highest detonation velocity for explosives. This is an excellent well, example. Provided you're going to punch through something. Versus right. Versus like if you're going to do like earth movement or whatnot. Right. So like lower detonation velocity explosives are very popular for the in the in the uh, land engineering uh, side of things where you're trying to move a large amount of earth. They tend to be cheaper too. You know price per quantity. Yeah. If you so, want to delete a grid square, you don't go out there and get like shaped charges and whatnot. Yeah, that's just not efficient. You got to use the right explosive for the right job and then employ it correctly, which is very important. So things to consider here is that one, tannerite being, yes, a weaker high explosive, still needs to be uh, treated with, you know, utmost respect. It can cause some harm as seen in previous videos, but not ideal for shape charges. So it doesn't work. Of course, could there be a way to make it work in a shape charge possibly but we've shown that it's not the best situation for this particular explosive but it can be eventually converted via into a powder and then mixed adequately to uh, form a correct shape charge but it's not the most effective shape charge yep all right well hey hopefully y'all found this video interesting and we'll make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see y'all next time here at ordnance lab thanks for watching if you like this video be sure to hit the like button Hit subscribe if you want to see more, and stay tuned for another episode here at Ordnance Lab.